All right, guys. So my fellow students or entry-level engineers, junior engineers, whatever. Okay, so today I'm going to show you how to use uh, Icarus Veridog and GTK Waveform, GTK Wave, to learn Veridog and simulation. Uh, since these tools are open source, uh, and I'm using a Ubuntu system, installing these two softwares is pretty straightforward and simple. Now let's get started, okay? So let's first pull up the terminal, control out, control plus alt plus T, and once you're in, you know, you can install these two softwares first. So you go sudo apt install iVerilog. For some reason, uh, the command is iVerilog instead of uh, iCarus Verilog, but whatever. GTK Wave. And that's it. Enter your password and you're good to go. So since I have installed these two softwares, it says uh, it's already the newest version, but what you will see on your screen is, uh, is uh, you know, a bunch of uh, inf info that says something is being installed. Okay, so let me just uh, make it clear that you are installing two softwares. The first one is called the iVerilog which is a compiler. So it compiles your Verilog code into something executable, something that is recognizable by the other software. For instance, if you're working on a FPGA and the compiler will, not necessarily this software, but a compiler, for example, Quartus will compile your source code into a uh, bit file that can be eventually transformed into a bit stream that will be used to program the FPGA chip. So in this case, this iVerilog, I, uh, it compiles your source code into something that can be recognized by the software, which is GTK Wave. So GTK Wave is a, a wave simulation tool. It basically displays the waveform of your test, test bench so that you can know, uh, you know, you, you can debug your RTL code in this case, right? Okay, now that we have installed these two softwares, uh, now let's do a simple example. Uh, let's do a XOR gate, exclusive OR gate. Uh, let me just open up the, my uh, repo. You can do something very similar, just, you know, create a, a, a folder which contains all of your projects, you know, quote and unquote. <laughs> very simple projects. Now let's make directory named XOR gate, all right? And CD into it. Now let's write our first uh, RTL code for the XOR gate. So you, I'm using GVim. You, you guys can use Nano, uh, Gedit, whatever. XOR Git, you know. All right, now let's write our variable code. Module XOR Git. So I, I'm gonna introduce you to this practice which is you know make sure your source file name is identical to your module name which you know this is a good practice this is a good habit it can make things simple in many cases so we have input a and let me demonstrate you another good practice which is this pref this postfix sorry this postfix means that this signal is a input. Uh, you can totally not add this postfix, 
but you will know that it's quite handy if you just add this post face as you once you instantiate you will know that this signal is the input and that signal is the output etc if you don't know sometimes you have to uh, you know you have to sort out the direction of a certain signal this just make it explicit and easy to use and you know since I I've worked in a company for four years as the RTL designer I was mainly working on FPGA you know this is one of our you know coding guideline so we have to stick to this form so that your code is easier to understand and and easier to manage and easier to work with other people's code right okay so the core is <laughs> the core it's quite simple it's just C output equals to A input XOR B input and that's it this is the probably the simplest module you can ever create and module okay let's check the format it's, it looks perfect okay so now that we have our source code we got to create another another test bench because we are eventually viewing the waveform you can we you can view a waveform without a test bench right now let's write our test bench to make sure our code is consistent I use this specific format so for a test bench I add a postfix TB which means test bench and you see this it's kind of different with your synthesizable RTL code we don't we don't see the bracket here and you know this is the Verilog syntax if you want to know why you can search it certainly Google for it here we don't mind that right okay now we define the signals a rack B and these will these two signals will serve uh, serve as our uh, input stimulus and C is the output and we have to instantiate the module we just created which is XOR gate here make sure that these two uh, these two names are identical otherwise the compiler will complain that it cannot find the module that named XOR gate All right now let's map the signal to the DUT by the way this is also called a DUT right device under test AI <coughs> excuse me so here you, you know that this practice make everything so much easier right okay then let me make sure it's recording now yeah it is okay let me explain a little bit so let's say if you don't have these postfix and you let's say you have another AND gate and you have to know uh, you wanna connect these two modules with some signals since you don't know whether C is output or input you might have a difficult time to figure out the direction now that we have this postfix we know that this A and B is the input when C is the output it's and we know that A and B 
uh, it serves as the input of the XOR gate. We know that XOR gate has two inputs and one output, so you will never mess up. So trust me, this is a good practice, right? Okay, now we have instantiated, we map the signals. So this signal, rec A and rec B, all these stimulus. So basically we can, in this initial block, we can, oh my typo, excuse me. We can specify how these two signals change over time. And let's just add some random value to these two signals. Okay, so before we modify the signals, we have to add these two commands, or not commands, these two lines so that we dump our, we dump the Excuse me. We have to add the, this one so that the synthesized file. Uh, excuse me. It's a VCD file so that the output of the iVerilog uh, compiler will be generated into this VCD file, and this is actually the waveform file we'll be looking at. So basically, GTK wave software will call this file and we can see the actual waveform according to the, the stimulus we'll be adding later. And we also have to add this line here and which basically says that the waveform will come from this test bench. Alright, so this is specific to the software because when I use other compilers, for example, Quarters or Cadence in Vision, you don't necessarily see these two lines. So we don't have to focus on these two lines and we just focus on things we're gonna add next okay uh, let's assign values to the two signals a and B so number one a equals to 1 prime B 0 number say 4 B equals to 1 prime B 1 So what these two lines mean is that after one second, we give signal A a value of zero. And after another four seconds, we give signal B another value of one. And we can do this accordingly. Sorry. For example, we can say another five seconds later, we give a, a high value which is 1 because we want to be testing the functionality of this XOR gate right and we want to test multiple inputs different scenarios and you will see when I pull out the waveform later and we add this specific line finish Uh, finish. We says two hundred seconds later, this is finished. All right. So now we pretty much finish our test bench. So the test bench goes like this. Imagine the test bench is a, for example. A motherboard or just uh, 
you know, a simple a simple uh, space where you hook up with other drivers or signals in this case. So we instantiate our DOT, which is the XOR gate. And then we use this construct named initial block to specify the signal, the specify the signals, the stimulus. Right. That's uh, that's from a system point of view. I just uh, explained a little bit about what this test bench means. Right. So now we have our RTL code as well as the test bench. Now we can do the exciting part, which is compiling the source code, and we use the command iverlog. Given that you have installed Icarus Verilog successfully, this iVerilog will invoke that specific tool to compile the source code. This hyphen O means that we'll be dumping our output into a file. The file name is specified by you, in this case, XOR wave. You can just specify some names that uh, that's easier to read, right? Now that we have to add our uh, source code to the compile to the compiler. So namely I'm adding this tool to the compiler. Now let's hit enter. Okay, it doesn't report any error. So, which means my I have no syntax error. You know, Verilog is a language that has a stricter syntax requirements. If you say missed a semico semicolon, it will report error. And it, let's do a list. Here we can see that the file is generated, which means the waveform is basically somehow stored into this file and this file will be recognized by the tool and then we do this command vvp extra wave which says vcd info dump file test extra vcd open for output this is something you have to do before you actually use gtk wave that goes to our last command, which is display the waveform. Okay, so GTK wave and our VCD file is named test XOR VCD, which is consistent with what we specify here. Right? Okay, now. Here comes the exciting moment. Here we go. Now we have opened up our waveform, the GTK wave software, free. Here you can see this is U0 DUT is identical with what we specified here in this test bench file. So we click, click on that and we'll see all the signals. And we select these signals. Okay, it doesn't work that way. We can just double click on these two signals and they will be added to our waveform. Okay, now let's check the waveform. So it basically translates our lines here into this waveform. For example, this number one, A equals to one, uh, A equals to low, is shown here. See, you can you can see that prior to time point one second, every single signal is unspecified. So every signal is uh, X. At one second, this A I A I is specified A low which is corresponds to this line. And 
another four seconds later, B is given a one value. So we know that A X or B, zero X or one is a one. And here goes our C output. The output is one, which is correct. So here we see that another five seconds later, A is given one. So one x roll 1 is 0. We see that our output faithfully faithfully <laughs> faithfully calculates the value of a x roll function. We can also see this line so it says 200 seconds later finish. So if we zoom out We'll know that after two another two hundred second, the waveform is finished. There's nothing after two hundred second later. All right, that's basically it. Before I end this video, I want to show you something which uh, is useful. So we add this line here. You see that. Without this line, this number one, number four, number five means uh, second. The unit is second. In the real life, this one second for a simple gate is just nonsense. It's impossible. Because usually the time is just on a nanosecond scale which is what we do here. So we, if we specify one uh, time scale, one nanosecond, 100 picosecond, and let's recompile our project. And close the waveform. Okay. Compile first. Pre-run and waveform. <clears throat> yeah, as you can see here, as you can see here, here everything becomes picosecond because we specified here that our uh, granularity for the time is picosecond. 100 picosecond. So if we zoom out, we see that the test ends at around 200 nanosecond plus. So with this specific line, whatever you specify here has this time unit pico nanosecond. If you don't specify the nanosecond here, it means one second. All right, this is just a good practice you can use in our simulate, you know, simulation. Okay, that concludes our tutorial today. Hope you guys learned something. This iCars Verilog and GTK Wave. Hope you learn a lot. That's it. I'll see you next time.